Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cast. Today on Cookie Cast it's the Darkest Timeline Podcast. So we're talking games, movies, TV, something from the week when it was recorded. And yep, you know, anything else that comes up sort of thing. Um, before we get started, please do take a minute to like, share, subscribe uh, and comment. You can drop us a comment into the comments box, and uh, we would love you to do that. If you do find yourself with a couple of spare minutes, and you feel so uh, so generously inclined, you could also leave us a review. Uh, all of the things that I've just mentioned there are a big help to the podcast, and we really do appreciate uh, all of it. Right, let's get cracking. So here we go. This is Cookie Cast, the Darkest Timeline Podcast. Hello. How are you doing? You well? Mm. I swore that I wasn't going to waste time this evening. I swore I was going to get cracking. I'm sure you can imagine how that went. Uh, lots to go through this week. Um, been what would be considered to be like a productive podcasting week. What I mean by that is, done a lot, and watched a lot, um, so we should get cracking. Um, start with something that's uh, almost definitely amusing. Um, I dropped half a dumbbell on my face. Um... So, about a week ago, no, maybe not, half a week ago or something, uh, I was doing an exercise called uh, Skull Crushers, for those of you that don't know what a Skull Crusher is, you, uh, you lie on a bench, you use dumbbells, and um, you hold them up high, and then you bring them down uh, to your face and push them back up. Um, the reason, ironically, the reason that they're called skull crushers is obviously if you drop the weight, uh, you could crush your skull. Um, I don't know that that's the official reason. That's always the way I looked at it. Uh, which is ironic because uh, a little while ago, I was getting sick and tired of the um, the fastenings that I had on uh, pretty much all of my weight. Um, and not all of them were the same. They were all different. Uh, not all of them. Like Some had like screws. Some were like, um, like weird um, like butterfly clip things. Um, and I wasn't happy with any of them. They were always coming undone, they were always coming loose. Uh, the butterfly clip ones are an absolute nightmare to get on and off, so um, made for difficulty uh, for quick change and stuff like that. And I'd always liked um, these uh, these ones that are like C-clips. So you flick a like, part of the clip and it opens out wide, and you put it on your bar, and then you close the clasp, and it's like a, it's like a lock. Um, and I always thought that they were they were really good, and I was like, oh, you know, if I ever get into a position where I've got got a bit of money uh, spare, which I know that's a weird thing to say, um, I'd dream myself to some. A little while ago, that was the case. I mean, we're talking twelve whole pounds for four. Um, so there was a point where I bought four, um, knowing that wasn't enough, but I thought I'll give them a try. Uh, got on with them quite well. And I bought four more at a later point. So plenty to go around. So getting to the back end of the workout, doing the skull crushers, second set. And for some unknown reason, uh, the clip came off. Now here's the thing. Those 
times in life where things go into slow motion. This was not one of those times. This was a completely different time. This was, it was like a cartoon. So, everything fell. And everything fell in a weird order. So, what you would expect is, the first thing to hit me in the face would be the clip. Then, the outer weight, then the inner weight, and then the rest of it would just collapse in on itself. Um, But that's not what happened. What happened was, uh, the big weight hit me in the face first, then the little weight, and then weirdly, the clip, like, bounced off my forehead. Um, The two weights, you know, the heavy components of this story, uh, hit me in the eye socket. Um, Leanne was literally walking in from the garden and witnessed this happening and was like, that that looks like it was bad news. Um, So, uh, finish the workout, we'll put that one out there, finish the workout and then um, put some ice on it and stuff. Uh, came up in a, uh, eventually came up in a beautiful black eye, um, a black eye that up till this point in time, ha- over half a week later, nobody has asked me about, not a single person, even people I've mentioned it to, even people I've like, oh you know, I've, I've, I've got a black eye, nobody's asked me about it. Not a single person. Um, Which is interesting in itself. Um, So, as well as being incredibly painful, it was kind of funny. I can see the funny side of it, let's put it that way. Um... Something I've talked about before, um, but I've, I've had a couple of experiences recently, and I'm a bit like, uh, um, I, I, I think we've come to the end of wearing masks, and I think, like I've, I've said this before, I don't think I'm ready for it to be over. Um, I'm not going to lie, I was very reluctant at the start of the whole process at the start of the pandemic um, I remember going um, to arcade club in Bury, and they were like oh, you can come in but first you have to use hand sanitizer." and I was like no I don't, I don't use that stuff it dries your hands out it's really bad if you've got any cuts or anything it burns like hell uh, it, it's, it's bad for you you know it's also alcohol based you know all of these different things uh, they were like then you can't come in like, for fuck's sake. Right, whatever, just give me a little splash of the stuff. And then I proceeded to bitch moan and complain about how, you know, they were they were affecting my rights, you know, that sort of stuff. Um <clears throat> fast forward to, you know, any point in time. I think this was this was the weekend before <coughs> uh lockdown. Um so Fast forward any point in time, you know, I I am <coughs> uh, what some would say lathered up in hand sanitizer. Um, uh, I, I've never I've never had a po- I've had a problem with wearing masks, and unfortunately for me, have found a lot of benefits. Um, admittedly, a lot of those. A few of those. Some of those benefits are the ability to be able to swear and pitch moan and complain behind the mask, and nobody knows you're doing it. It's um, it's been a real game changer for me. Um, but like I say, uh, I've had a few. I've been to a few places. I've I've, I've had a few instances where I've been indoors in you know, busy places, and I have looked around, and it's like, oh, I'm the only person wearing a mask in here. Went to a place, um, 
two or three weeks ago, probably indoor, probably a hundred people. I was the only person wearing a mask. Uh, I've been to a place recently uh, where there was 50 people. Uh, I was the only person wearing a mask. Um, and I, I just don't, I just don't think I'm ready to give up the mask. Uh, I had a conversation uh, with a friend. Um, and we were talking about the the mask situation going, and we were both kind of saying, you know, probably there will come a time where we'll sort of stop, but not quite yet, sort of thing. It's like just not quite ready for it. Bearing in mind, this is a point that you know. People are still left, right, and centre getting the uh, getting the virus. So, um, you know, there's, there is that aspect that people seem to forget. Um, you know, still there, still very much there, still very much going on. Um, had a tattooed them last Thursday. Um. Not a new one, I had a tattoo finished. I was hoping to get another one started, another one from my extensive list, which, yes, I know, oh, I'm surprised you've got any space left. Well, I have got space left. Um, and, you know, all the other things that people say. I've got space left, I've got a long list of tattoos that I still want to do, and I've got plenty of space for them, so that, 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 that covers that. Um... But got tattoo finished, which um, which limits my um, exercise capability. So running goes out the window straight away. Uh, certain workouts uh, are, are also have to go go the same way. So you know, it's not like I've had it on my leg, and it's not like I'm going to be doing any leg workouts anytime soon. I.e. today, I had to switch workouts around today with uh, tomorrow's, that would probably make sense, um, but I haven't run since Thursday, so I didn't run Friday, Saturday, or today, I have walked my running route to keep up with the, um, exercise, the cardio, that sort of stuff. And I have done workouts that don't require legs. Uh, and I have had a rest day. Typically, Thursday was the rest day. Or fortunately, Thursday was the rest day. Uh, but back to it on Friday. So, um, something that... And I know, I know, I've, I've, no, I've mentioned this before, and I keep coming back to this. I know it's probably getting a little old now. But something that always surprises me is how kind of twitchy I get, how kind of antsy I get when there is a situation when I can't run, which that, that one always baffles me, when I can't work out, that one uh, that one makes a little bit more sense to me um, because it's something I enjoy more. But I just, I, 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 it's just this, how I get real twitchy about this, this sort of stuff. Oh my God, I can't work out. Oh my God, I can't run. That sort of stuff. Um, I don't know how much um, of a knock-on effect it's had with certain other things. Um, there's been my maybe last week, maybe the week before, spoke about having um, a weight problem put on um, quite a bit of weight and um, had that sort of kick up the backside uh, from a brother-in-law basically saying you, you're going backwards what what the hell's going on it's like yeah yeah I get it um, so I've made some I've made some changes I've made changes to um, the way I've been doing like like my diet uh, what I've been eating how I've been eating when I've been eating all that sort of stuff. I've made a, made a swooping change um, so few days into this I'm like oh you know I think I've I think I've, I've got this cracked feeling feeling good about it um I should weigh myself and see what difference it's made 
uh, what difference it made was I put on three pounds. So that was fun. I was like, oh, okay, maybe this is just uh, sort of like a fluctuation, like a blip. You know, you shouldn't, <clears throat> you shouldn't weigh yourself all the time. You shouldn't weigh yourself every day, that sort of stuff. Maybe it's just that. Got to today, which is weigh-in day. Uh, weighed myself twice today. Uh, first thing, weighed myself, and I was like, okay, so it wasn't a blip. I've put on three pounds. That is ridiculous. How is that even possible? Uh, weighed myself a little bit later. Um, and apparently the first weight was incorrect, uh, and I'd only put a pound on, uh, which then when you start tying it into the, you know, going from running to not, the correlation's probably there. Um, I have been worried, I have been concerned, I've been a little worried that, um, maybe it's all getting a little bit away from me, um. As Bill Burr said, putting on weight's easy. You don't need a trainer. You don't need any sort of help with it, any motivation. Uh, you can just lie on the sofa and, and do that. Losing weight, you know, that's a whole different thing. And age is a factor. Um, it just get it just gets harder and harder and harder and harder. Um, things are, you know, there's a lot more about, you know, how you're eating, when you're eating, what you're eating, should you be eating this, should you be eating that, um, you know, if I, if I do intermittent fasting one day, and then eat normally the next day, how is that going to affect things, is that a good way to do it, is it a bad way to do it, it's, it's down to that sort of level, and I'm not sure I'm seeing the results that I should be seeing, or that I would want to see, and it's concerning, um, and yeah, there are times when I just feel like it's getting, it, it's getting away from me. Um, anyway, so went, went to have a tattoo them. Um, weirdly, uh, I don't know, um, tattoos are a bit of a routine kind of thing. You turn up at a particular place at a particular time, you go through a process, you say hello to everybody, you have a bit of chat, catch up, that sort of stuff. Eventually you get partially undressed is usually the way. Get yourself into a quote-unquote comfortable position, which, believe me, having certain tattoos done, uh, there is no such thing as a comfortable position. Um, bearable might be a word. Um, and then away you go. Uh, there have been certain routines and things that happen um, in and around that. So one of the things that kind of started to happen, I don't know how or why or where it came from, uh, but it was a thing, was um, any time I got a tattoo, I would, get, uh, I would go to Thomas the Baker and I would get Leanne for Fruit and Nut Flapjack. Um, the other things that I would do is whilst uh, throughout the day, I uh, very rarely eat anything. Um, from my perspective, I don't want to end up being sick. Um, I once had a horrific, um, tattoo experience, which involved, um, lying on my stomach for an entire day and being tattooed and just as the day went on I just felt more and more sick and, uh, and it's kind of traumatized me somewhat so I always try to avoid it and always have since then but I do try and drink coffee uh, because the coffees I drink have got um, an element of sugar to them um, and that I feel that sort of keeps me going and gets me through the day so I've written down two things about this firstly um, I tried to get a coffee on the way to the tattooist. I had to be there for 10. I was on track to be there for 5 to 10. And at quarter to 10, I attempted to get a coffee. The reason I say attempted to was because every, every place I passed 
where I would consider getting a coffee from, my usual haunts, were closed. Or, in in one case, my emergency backup, where I was like, I mean, in a pinch, I'll take it, but it's not my favourite, was gone. Boarded up, no less. Um, I was like... I, I don't understand what's happening. It's quarter to ten. Why are the coffee shops not open? Or still in existence? What the hell is happening here? So I had to abandon my search for coffee. I was like, is there something going on? Has there been, has there been like a major power cut in the city centre? That only seems to affect coffee shops. It, it was weird i was going to places i was like if i'd have come here x amount of time ago this place would have been open at like six o'clock in the morning it's quarter to ten so i went to the tattooist and i was talking to um brett the piercer and laurie uh the guy that works on the desk and i was like i, I tried to get coffee on the way here that was Interesting, and they're like, "Yeah, nothing's open. Coffee shops don't open now before eleven o'clock." I I don't understand what that means. Why? Who doesn't want coffee on a morning? Why would this be a thing? This isn't a thing. I was informed that one of my uh, one of my favourites, uh, a different location, was in fact open. I was like, "Look, I'm gonna go and get a coffee. I'm gonna go and do that." I went. I queued. I got a coffee. And just just completely baffled by the whole situation. Just like this is this is a world gone topsy turvy. This is a world gone wrong. Coffee shops that aren't open. I bought my coffee, I went, started getting and tattooed them. Gets to lunchtime. I was like, right, I've got some jobs to do. I need to go and get another coffee. I need to go and buy my flapjack. And I need to get some cash out of the bank. You know, the man needs paying. So I was like, look, wrap me up. I'm going to run and do these jobs while you while you have some lunch. So I got wrapped up and out I go. I go to Thomas the Baker. I'm like, oh, I'll get these for flapjack. And when I picked up the pack of flapjack, I was like, are these in the wrong place? Because that sign says that these are... I mean, that can't even be right. They're so expensive. Oh, it doesn't make any sense. Where's the counter? Next, please. Oh, just, just those. Just those there. I'd considered getting something to eat, but I was like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if I can afford it. Just told me how much it was. And I think it was something like £3.15. And I felt like saying to her, it's four flapjacks. Like, how, how? I used to buy them, I think they were, I think they were £1.10 at one point. Like, I don't understand. I could have made them for cheaper. Like, this, this is just strange. I go over the road, I'm like, oh, I've got a queue, I've got to get my coffee. Get my coffee, place my order, I'm about to pay. And what I hadn't done when I'd paid for in the first thing in the morning was really paying all that much attention. I did pay attention when they told me how much the coffee was the second time round, and I'm like, why is this coffee so expensive? What the hell's going on? And this comes back to, this is a realisation that I had over the course of that day. This comes back to this cost of living crisis. So there's a cost of living crisis, there's been a thing today. Uh, There isn't a cost of living crisis, you just need a better job and you need to work more hours. Well there we go, at least that's a solution. So there's a cost of living crisis. Crisis. And the realisation is that... Apparently everything's just so much more expensive than it used to be. And that's... 
because I, you know, I had this conversation when I when I got when I got back. I was like, it's not, it's not gas, electricity, water, petrol. You know those sorts of things. It's everything. It's everything. Everything is more. I, at one point, I considered buying a bottle of Diet Coke. It's like, oh, you know, I get a bottle of Diet Coke, keep me going. You know, a little bit of pep. Two pounds. I used to buy bottles of Diet Coke on my way to work. Uh, and I used to get two for a pound. Two pounds for the same thing. Four times more expensive. I, <sighs> the realisation I had was that I'm just going to get to a point where I will just start saying, oh, I can't do that because I physically can't afford it. Here's the thing. Here's how it breaks down. I, I, can't, I can't justify the flapjack. Won't be doing that again. And as far as the coffee is concerned, that coffee is now what I consider to be too expensive. It was from a place that I've been going to for years. And I always considered it to be one of, if not the cheaper, of the well-known franchises, brands, whatever you want to call them. I always consider it to be the cheaper. I consider their coffee to be the best of the three of four main ones winner winner chicken dinner cheapest and the best absolutely that should have been their slogan now whether that is still the case I'm not sure as far as best coffee I was drinking it and I was like yeah it's, it's fine you know it's it's a decent cup of coffee but it's not worth the money I paid for it there was a conversation that I had with Leanne earlier in the week about whether the things that we buy are worth the money we're paying. You know, when you drink a cup of coffee, was it worth the amount you paid for it? And that's becoming one of those things that there's becoming a little bit of a deficit. It's like, it was good. It was a good cup of coffee. But was it worth the money I paid for it? And the answer is going to start being No. Whilst ever the price keeps going up and whilst ever this increase keeps happening, the answer is going to start to be, no, it's not. And that's when things are going to start changing. That's when things are going to be like, I spend X amount of money on, on coffee. I'm not going to do that anymore. And apparently, for all these years, you know, if you want to get a mortgage, stop buying coffee. Apparently that's been the answer all along. So maybe that's just it. Just stop buying things. Stop buying the the few small things that make your life slightly better in some way. And there you go. That's the answer. It's times like this I wonder if uh, if 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 the drug market has a cost of living crisis. Something that I've been dealing with um, maybe a week, maybe a little bit longer. Um, it's quite de- it's quite in depth. This one, I'm taking like a deep breath because I'm like this one's quite quite in depth. Been in, been in a bit of a mood. Been in a bit of a mood. I had to admit that to myself recently. Um, anger. A lot of, there's a lot of anger. Um, and I've had to try and look at why. Like, why is this? Um, and there's a few things that I've sort of looked at. There's a few things going on um, or not going on or whatever. Uh, I think I'm having a particular uh, level of disturbed sleep. I think that's uh, a real contributing factor. Now, I have disturbed sleep anyway. Um, I think previously people have tried to tell me that they think I have uh, sleep apnea. Um, I don't know that for sure because it's not something I've ever looked into. But 
from what I've been told, I was out of normal sleep, but from what I've been told, it's probably quite likely. Um, so I think I have a certain level of disturbed sleep anyway. Um, and then if you add to that another level on top of disturbed sleep, that's probably going to be a contributing factor. Um, there is the aspect that, as I've said previously, uh, there was supposed to be um, some building work going on, uh, some changes to the house, changes to our living space, and other things like that. That's been put back four months, I think. Um, that has been causing me issues. That's been causing me problems. Um, and all of this has, has manifested in, in this way. So, um, take my youngest daughter as an example. Um, at particular points in time, I have to interact with my youngest. Um, and she'll say something. And what started happening is I've started getting two possible answers. She'll ask me a question. Let's say, and I get two possible answers. And one answer is, oh, darling, you know, it's like this or it's like that. It's like the other. That is, let's call it the nice version. Then there is another version. And the other version is, oh, why, why are you asking me this question? Why do you want to know? Just accept that it is that way and move on. The not so nice version. And what's been happening recently is rather than pushing the not so nice version away and going with the, oh, you know, let's go with the nice version. It, it's like the not so nice version is coming out automatically without any help or <sighs> control, maybe, from me. And the whole time it's happening... The nice part of me is going, why are you saying this? Why are you doing this way? Why are we why 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 are we doing this? What what's happening here? And then the then the bit of me that's saying the the not so nice thing is going, I don't know. <laughs> and I feel awful and I feel terrible. I feel largely like I'm letting my children down because something else that I've started doing is going well you can't you can't control yourself you can't stop saying the wrong thing to the wrong people to the at the wrong time you need to stop this and I'm like I, I, I don't know what's happening I can't I haven't, I haven't got the, the filter has gone so I've started removing myself from situations, you know, like, um, there's all this all this stuff going on yesterday, I was like, we need to do this, we need to do that, we've got jobs to do, with, with the, but they're not jobs, they're fun things, but they're still considered to be jobs, and they need doing it, and they need doing it at a particular time, so let's get them done. And then I've just been, like, letting them do their own thing. Like, oh, you want to play, so go and play. You want to read a comic, so go and read a comic. You also want to go and play, so go and do that. And then I'm like, cool, they're, they're doing things that they want to do. And they're not interacting with me, and I'm not interacting with them, and I feel awful, and I feel terrible. And I'm worried what I'm going to say, and I'm worried how I'm, how I'm going to come across. And they... I took, I took the older two to play mini golf on Saturday. And we had a great time. And I, I was I was helping them and I was teaching them and I was showing them how to how to get the best result from 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 mini golf, but not from mini golf. I was looking at it from a from a golf perspective. Um, and all of that. And that was fine. We had a good time. We enjoyed it and we had a laugh. But a question is, if you don't feel bad as a parent, are you really doing a good job? Are you being the best parent you can be if you don't feel bad? You know, that's another thing. 
And I feel that there's a lot going on. I feel that there's probably a lot of stress. And I, I feel like I'm also not dealing with it. And I feel like I'm pushing it down and being like, it's fine. Everything's fine. It's okay. It's going to be fine. There's nothing to worry about. Let's just keep going. Let's keep moving. It's okay. We're, we're going to be all right. All of this constantly. While simultaneously, what I want to do and what I want to say is everything is not okay. I am not okay. I am angry about certain things. I'm pissed off about certain things. I'm disappointed with certain things. Certain elements of things make me furious. But that's not okay. So we've got to, we've got to push that down. You've got to you can't say that you're not happy with this. You can't say that you're not happy with that because that doesn't help anything. And it just goes round and round and round and round and round. And I feel awful. I feel terrible about it. I feel I feel like I'm letting everybody down. I feel like I'm letting the children down. I feel like I'm letting I feel like I'm letting the freaking dog down because there's something wrong with the dog. He was fine and then he's not. And I'm like, he's he's fine, he's okay. There's nothing wrong with him. He's just he's just tired. Whereas there's a possibility that that's not the case. And tomorrow I might have to ring the vet. And all that I can hear is those pounds going ching 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 And I feel like I'm failing everyone. I feel like I'm letting everyone down. I managed to get the cars cleaned. And I want to ask a question. Is there a more satisfying job out there than cleaning the car? It's a family activity. And by that, my eldest is like, I'm going to clean the cars and I'm going to do a great job because that's what I did last time. And then, like any child doing any job, it's like, oh, but it's not actually that fun. Like, yeah, well, you know, jobs aren't fun. And certain jobs you're going to realise you're going to have to do every single day for the rest of your freaking life. And that's when life stops being fun. Um, so I have, this, I have the same deal every time. And the deal is this. You can pick one of the cars to take to the car wash and I will pay have that car washed and my suggestion is always the same I suggest you pick the big one as I said to Liam I've got no issues taking the big car to the car wash because it's too tall for even me to wash I had to stand on the the like the door frame bit to try and get the aerial off to run it through the car wash and I struggled I'm six foot two. Um, there was no way I was going to be cleaning the roof. Let's put it that way. So that's my fe- that's my my deal. On the flip side, you then have to wash the other car, and you have to clean both cars inside and out. I want hoovering. I want dusting. I want surface wipes. I want alloys clean. I want um, the the black stuff. You know, the make the tire look black. I want the rubbish gone. I want them to be immaculate. Um, which is not, there's no small job. It's no small task. It's a big job, and especially when there's two. Especially when you get a hoover that's only that only lasts, because you've switched to portable hoover, so it's battery powered, so it only lasts for an hour. Well, it's going to take you, I'm going to go out on a limb and say an hour and a half, to hoover two cars. Um, but, ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you this. Is there a more satisfying job to do? I've been thinking about it, and I don't know if there is. When you get the get the mats hoovered, get all the rubbish out. Uh, I, um, 
I live with somebody who um, who thinks that um, that cars are skips on wheels, and they treat them as such. So it's nothing but just rubbish everywhere. Everywhere. If you can find a surface, it's got rubbish on it. If you can find a pocket, it's got rubbish in it. If you can find a console, it's got rubbish in it. It's always sweet wrappers. So get the rubbish out. Baby wipes. Yeah, they live in the door handle. Absolutely. You know, for that long so they go super dry. Yeah. Why not? Um, so, when you get all the rubbish out, you get the mats out and you hoover the mats. Bang on, you know, bang off all the dirt and then hoover them. Clean the car. Dry the car so there's no streaks. Do the windows. Do the alloys with the alloy spray. Do the tyres with the tyre spray. Get all the rubbish out. Hoover the floors. Hoover the seats. Hoover the boots. If you're lucky, you're like you're like me, and you've got a boot like line, I think that comes out. Get that out, get that hoovered, get it all put back in, and then you look at it and you sit in it. You get in it that first time. The outside's clean. The wheels look amazing. The tires look good. Number plate's got no bugs on it. The the silver, the chrome looks silver and chrome. The that green gunky stuff that builds up on the rubber gone you get you look at it from the outside you're like that car looks sexy you get in it and there's no crumbs and there's no sweet wrappers and there's no dust on the dashboard you can see the control thing for the radio or the you know listening to music or the sat nav or whatever for some you know not unknown reason, but it smells nicer, and you feel like you can just kind of relax a bit. And is there a more satisfying job than cleaning the car? Let me know. Drop me a line. You can do that. Right. Let's talk entertainment. And oh boy. Have I got a have I got a, a, a whole host of entertainment for you? Um, I watched episode three, four, five, and the season finale, episode six of Moon Knight. I'm gonna talk about episodes three, four, and five to start with, and then I'll talk about episode six. Um, after the first two episodes, Moon Knight did pretty much exactly what I expected it to, and it went oh spoilers by the way. Uh went massively downhill uh it's a tv show tv show will never have the kind of budget that a movie has and the way that tv shows work is that they give you something at the start to draw you in they then rely heavily on their actors and their acting ability to keep you going because there's going to be a lot of talk and not a lot of action <coughs> and then <coughs> a season finale is where 80 percent of the money is going to get spent um so episode three, four, and five were just they just were just exactly what I've said. Literally no action. They removed the uh, the title character. Not wanting to spoil it too much, but made sure to get rid of the title character straight off the bat because that's where all like, your CGs going. Um, so save a big chunk of money there, and uh, a lot of talking. Um, They've gone with the any long-running superhero TV show does the oh the main character's crazy episode. Uh, Moon Knight decided to jump in feet first with that one, and then basically just ran with it for the, through the whole series, um, even going as far as to take it down the. Uh, are they really in a mental institution? Let's find out. So I was just 
wildly disappointed as I kind of expected I would be, but I'd also kind of hoped I wouldn't be. In comes episode six, and who did we spend all the money? Uh, I'm I'm I imagine that they were like, okay, so we want to do this big finale, uh, big finale. We want to do this big episode. It's the last episode. We want to spend literally every penny we've got on that last episode. It was CG left, right, and center. There was all sorts going on. It was fast paced. Um. The last episode was really good and it was really well done. Uh, obviously, a lot gone into it and a lot, um, unfortunately, to put it this way, but a lot of money put into it. Um, did raise some interesting questions. Um, felt <sighs> sometimes cliffhangers are done well, and sometimes. Cliffhangers are done really badly. And there is a fine, very fine line between the two. And unfortunately, from my perspective, I don't think that Moon Knight pulled it off particularly well. Uh, That's just my opinion. Um, If you are planning to watch it and you have listened to this, I hope I haven't spoiled it too much for you. I did. You know, I did say spoilers. Uh, if you haven't watched it and you weren't sure whether you were going to, if you think like me and you know any any sort of TV show is just not really going to live up to the the movies, it, it it just is that way. You can't escape it. They don't have the same budget. It it is literally that simple. Um. Overall, it was fine. What what I can say. Oscar Isaac is amazing in it. His acting is top notch. It's fantastic. But it has to be, it needed to be, to carry literally the entire show. So you've got that that double-edged sword, I suppose. Yes, he's great in it, but he had to be. Because the whole show, the, 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 you know, the whole show rested on his shoulders. Even though you've got Ethan Hawke, he, didn't, he wasn't a particularly standout character. Um, you know, it wasn't like he was taking the weight of the whole show. Um, going back to watching Spaced, I uh, watched the first two episodes of Series 2. Just, just fantastic, let's face it. Um, I think I might do more of an overview of the whole, um... The whole beast that is space. Maybe when I finish the second series. Watch three films. However, those three films were not new films. I watched them all for a reason. Um, I watched John Carpenter's The Thing. Uh, because I spent about four hours talking about it. And all of its possibilities for a tattoo. On Thursday. And it reached a point. It reached like boiling point where I was like. You know what? I'm going to have to go home and watch John Carpenter's The Thing this evening, which is exactly what I did. Um, rarely does that happen, but I was like, no, it's happening. Um, what do I need to say about John Carpenter's The Thing that's not already been said? What I can say is this. Something that I was a bit like, how did they ever think that was going to work out? These guys have gone off to the Arctic. Now I know that there's like this this well known sort of thing where you get like it's even mentioned in it about cabin fever and um, you can get like really bad depression, uh, spending like prolonged amounts of time in somewhere like uh, the Arctic. Something that I thought was interesting is Three, three things that make an amazing combination to take with you. Whiskey. Weed. And guns. It, it was always going to be a great start. In fact, look, let's change whiskey to alcohol because there's, um, there's a guy that's drinking vodka. Um, but yeah, you know, they're all in some sort of state. 
at various points in it. You've got a guy who literally, whenever he's on screen, is smoking weed. And there's a scene where he's sharing, you know, weed with somebody else. You've got um, Kurt Russell's character, who's basically an alcoholic. Um, he's drinking, like, whiskey, beer. There's a doctor who's drinking um, vodka at various points in time. Various other people are drinking. And then, yeah, they've got loads of guns. Flamethrowers. Dynamite. It was always going to be a, a good a good recipe for, well, disaster, let's face it. It's a great film. I'm looking forward to getting, uh, getting something tattooed from it. Um, in the process of trying to find my The Thing Blu-ray, I saw another film on my shelf and I was like, ah, if we're going classic horror, that one's got to be up there. So I think it was literally the next night I watched uh, Dawn of the Dead, what could be argued as being the original, sort of the grandfather of zombie movies. Um answers a lot of those sort of you know what would you do if you were in a shopping mall if you're american or a shopping center if you're british and you were just on your own and you know the the whole place was yours how would you go about it and it answers those questions um obviously we can't have a zombie movie without the the message that man is truly the monster um, it's it's great at the end of the day. It's uh, it's a very good film. It's very enjoyable. It's a good watch. Um, yeah, another one of those. Not a massive amount to really say. Um, and then over two nights, because it is three hours long, uh, I watched uh, Wolf of Wall Street, which is one of my favourite films. Um, because even though it is three hours long, it is so very watchable. Um, again, not a huge amount I really need to say about it, uh, other than I watched it. Um, the, <laughs> the, uh, I think I've talked about this previously on a podcast and I think I've talked about the exact same bit, but I will never not just be absolutely blown away by the, um, the Quaaludes, the the Lemon Seven Fourteen, is it? Um, that entire that entire bit of the film is just exquisite. Um, just for the, did you drive, sir? Um, so yeah, one of those. I watched three films in the last week. But they're not new. The ones I've probably talked about before, and I won't. Uh, I won't waste everybody's time. Um, computer game wise, something something interesting happened. So I was playing um, the Sniper Elite games, as we know. Um, but I got into a conversation. Uh, I got into a conversation with Sam, and I was saying, you know, um, it was something along the lines of, oh, you know, there are certain games that. I, that I would want to play, that I would like to play, but they're older games, you know, maybe two or three generations ago at this point. Um, and he was saying to me, he's like, oh, I have nothing against playing old games um, because I accept that A, they won't look as good, B, they won't play as well. Um, and and, and as, long as, you, as long as you accept those things, you can still have a great time. And I was like, do you know what? Now that you've said that, I think I'm going to break out um, Star Wars The Force Unleashed 1 and 2 from the Xbox 360. And I'm going to put them on the Xbox One, give them a while. Uh, and that's what I did. I put, I put the first one on, and it was like, away you go. And it doesn't look great, and it doesn't play quite like you would want it to. It's not, it's not terrible. It's not like original Resident Evil controls. Um, but I'm, you know, I've been playing it for a few days, and I'm still pressing the wrong buttons at the wrong times and things. Um, 
something that, that did strike me is although it doesn't look amazing for the nowadays and it doesn't quite play the way you would want it to they just don't make games like that anymore I was saying um, I was talking about it I was saying Force Unleashed gives you all the tools that you could need you've got a lightsaber, you've got push, pull force, lightning double jump, dash um, you can pick stuff up and throw it through windows which if you're in space cause it vacuum and all of this it gives you all of the tools you could need to be a, an effective Jedi and then it says crack on if you can find a way to do it then you do it and I, can play, I compared it to um, Jedi Fallen Order and I was like Jedi Fallen Order does some of those things but it doesn't do all of those things. And they're certainly a generation apart. So how is that the case? How is it that a game from, at this point in time, three generations ago, is better, barring the graphics and the controls, the game aspect is better than a game from now, from this, you know, from the, well, it's the last generation. And it's just baffling me, it's just, it's really sort of like, it just keeps going through my mind, like, is this it? Is this where we are? Our games aren't as good as they used to be? Or is that nostalgia? Nostalgia is heroin for old people, as they say. I don't know, but I don't like the feeling that I've got. <coughs> um, I don't like the idea that um, the games used to be better. But I think I've known it for a while. One thing I will say is if they announced that they were doing a remaster of The Force Unleashed 1 and 2... I would absolutely snatch their hands off. And it's it's absolutely ripe for a remaster. So if anybody from, you know, I don't know what it would be now, LucasArts, I guess, is listening, take my money. That's all I'll say. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the podcast. If you listen to all the way through to this point, thank you very much for listening along. You are the, uh, you're the good ones. Um, <coughs> got a little bit of a tickle so I'm going to let you go and I'll see you next time bye bye so there you go what do you think of that another one done another one gone big thank you for listening along if you made it all the way to the end and uh, before I let you go please do consider liking sharing, subscribing and commenting all the ings if you've got a few minutes you could leave us a little review tell us how much you love the podcast because uh, it's a big help and we do appreciate it you can also check out our website it's thecookiecast.com uh, we've got some social media links and an email button for you to be able to drop us a line and tell us how you're getting on that's it for this one until next time I'm going to say bye and I'll see you then.